The General Association of Regular Baptist Churches is a group of churches that are autonomous and independent. The Northern Baptist Convention in the early 1900s became more and more controlled by theological liberals or moderates that tolerated liberalism. Within the NBC was a group called the Baptist Bible Union, made up of those who were opposed to modernism. Eventually, many of the BBU congregations withdrew from the convention, and the last meeting of the BBU was the founding meeting for the GARBC in 1932. The name Regular Baptist was in the past a designation for Calvinistic churches, but that's never been the exact position of Garb churches, which generally deny limited atonement, for example. An article on the Garb website describes the meaning of their name in this way. The General Association of Regular Baptist Churches has affirmed a moderately Calvinistic statement of faith based on the New Hampshire Confession, 1833. Its use of the word regular has never been a direct reference to a particular view of the atonement. Rather, it stems from the later, more generic meaning of the word. Regular Baptists held orthodox beliefs in an era when some Baptist churches were highly irregular. For our churches, regular is an adjective that describes Baptists as orthodox churches that affirm the rule or measure of Scripture. Garb does not view itself as a denomination. Churches that participate are not members, but simply in fellowship. Their constitution says, upon the recommendation of the Council of 18 at the annual meeting of the GARBC and a majority vote of the association, the church shall be received into fellowship. Note the word fellowship, not membership. A Baptist church cannot be a member of anything outside of itself. It can declare itself in fellowship with any body of Baptists on earth, but cannot be a member. At the second meeting of the GARBC annual conference, they issued a resolution which in part renounced conventionism and said, we further discountenance denominational interference with the internal program of the local church. They affirm that there is one God in three persons, Christ's virgin birth, his resurrection, ascension, and current mediatorial work, eternal conscious suffering of the unsaved in the lake of fire, and a literal devil. Garb churches do not refer to sacraments, but rather have two ordinances, baptism and the Lord's Supper. Baptism is by a single immersion and for believers only and not infants. It is required for church membership. The Lord's Supper is a commemoration, that is, the view of the elements is the symbolic one. In an article the association published online contrasting their view to a reformed view, they state that the elements are not means of grace, but real blessing is experienced in connection with the ordinances. On who should participate in communion, a commentary article on the Garb website says, we have no right to bar an immersed, doctrinally sound believer from obeying the Lord by observing his supper. On the scriptures, the first article of faith states that there are 66 books and that the scriptures are sufficient, verbally and plenarily inspired, infallible and inerrant, and the supreme standard. A 1995 resolution stated that the objective written word of God is the sole authority for the work of the church and the lives of individual Christians, and the Bible can and must be interpreted in a literal or normal way in which the grammatical, historical, and theological contexts of each passage are to be considered with the entire scripture. On Bible translations, they say, GARBC churches believe that the original manuscripts were inspired, but we do not say our English translations are inspired. Other churches teach that the King James Version of the Bible is the only inspired translation, but GARBC churches consider this view to be unorthodox. Some GARBC pastors still believe the KJV is the best translation of the best available manuscripts. Publications by Regular Baptist Press use only certain approved translations, however. The Garb website says, in 2009, the GARBC Council of 18 added the ESV to the list of translations approved for authors to use in regular Baptist Press publications. When the Council began the policy in 1963, the list included the KJV, ASV, Berkeley Version, and Williams Translation. This list was expanded through the years and now includes ASV, ESV, Holman Christian Standard Bible, NASB, NIV, New Schofield Bible, and Amplified Bible. In the fifth article of faith, it is stated on the subject of creation that the creation account is neither allegory nor myth, but a literal and historical account. Adam and Eve were directly created by God, and from them all people descended. A 1996 resolution states that the Bible's teaching is a mature and perfect physical universe made in six normal sequential days, Exodus 2011, with organisms capable of only limited variation in reproduction after their kind.
The association's sixth article of faith affirms a human sin nature originating in Adam's sin. The article of faith on salvation says the following, We believe that the salvation of sinners is divinely initiated and holy of grace through the mediatorial offices of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who, by the appointment of the Father, voluntarily took on himself our nature, yet without sin, and honored the divine law by his personal obedience, thus qualifying himself to be our Savior, that by the shedding of his blood in his death he fully satisfied the just demands of a holy and righteous God regarding sin, that his sacrifice consisted not in setting us an example by his death as a martyr, but was a voluntary substitution of himself in the sinner's place, the just dying for the unjust, Christ the Lord bearing our sins in his own body on the tree, that having risen from the dead, he is now enthroned in heaven and uniting in his wonderful person the tenderest sympathies with divine perfection. He is in every way qualified to be a suitable, a compassionate, and an all-sufficient Savior. We believe that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the only condition of salvation. Repentance is a change of mind and purpose toward God prompted by the Holy Spirit and is an integral part of saving faith. In that statement, they affirm salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, sinlessness of Christ, substitutionary atonement, and repentance as part of saving faith. In their tenth article of faith, they clarify further that salvation, the new birth, is an instantaneous event and not a process. In a 1982 resolution titled Christ as the Only Way, the association's messengers stated that they declare our faith in the Bible as the only word of God and in the Lord Jesus Christ as the only Savior and the only way to heaven, and in genuine faith as the only means of experiencing God's free salvation. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Acts 4.12 on whether salvation can be lost or forfeited, Garb denies this, saying that we believe that all who are truly born again are kept by God the Father for Jesus Christ. In an article contrasting their view with the Reformed view, they refer to their view as the Baptist position. Here's what the article says. Both the Reformed and Baptist positions hold that God decreed, but they differ regarding the logical order of the decree involving election, so that the Reformed position yields in limited atonement and the Baptist avoids it. Reform position. God decreed logically the election of the recipients of his saving grace before the decree to provide salvation for them through Christ. Thus, Christ's atoning work had only the elect in view, hence limited atonement. Baptist position. God decreed logically the provision of salvation through Christ for a lost world, and then in view that people could not receive it by any means of their own, additionally decreed the election of certain people to be voluntary partakers of it. This position sees God making the benefits of atonement equally available for all, and providing especially for its appropriation by the elect. The garb view of sanctification is expressed in the twelfth article of faith. It is three parts, the first beginning at the moment of salvation, then a continuing process afterward, and finally at the Lord's return the process is completed. This view denies the Wesleyan holiness concept of entire sanctification in this life. In their articles of faith, they state that the Holy Spirit, a divine person, convicts, bears witness of the truth of the gospel, and several other things, but then clarifies in opposition to the charismatic and Pentecostal viewpoints that the sign revelatory gifts of the Holy Spirit have fulfilled their purpose and are not applicable to the work of the Holy Spirit today. A 1973 resolution on the charismatic movement said that the charismatic movement is based upon a misunderstanding of the teaching of scripture regarding the spiritual gifts, particularly the gift of tongues and that the gift of tongues was bestowed in New Testament times as a special sign and as an authentication of the apostolic message, and that it was never intended as a spiritual gift to be exercised regularly in the churches throughout this dispensation. On end times or eschatology, the guard position is exclusively premillennial and with a pre-tribulation rapture. The 18th article of faith is on Israel and says, We believe in the sovereign selection of Israel as God's eternal covenant people, that she is now dispersed because of her disobedience and rejection of Christ, and that she will be regathered in the Holy Land and after the completion of the church will be saved as a nation at the second advent of Christ. On human sexuality, the Articles of Faith state that we believe that our Creator established human gender biologically in fixed binary categories, male and female. Seeking to confuse or change the God-given distinction of the two genders violates God's creative design and revealed will, and that marriage is only between one man and one woman, and that is the only appropriate relationship for sexual intimacy. 
1977 resolution titled Homosexuality is Sin stated that garb churches oppose and condemn all homosexuality and urge all who practice such things to repent and come to Christ for cleansing. In a 1985 resolution on the permanence of marriage, fellowshipping churches were encouraged to have policies preventing divorced people from serving as pastors or deacons. Following this, it was stated, Whereas we deplore this scourge of the destruction of the home in our society and churches, we express ourselves as sympathetic to all who unwillingly find themselves caught in this plague and urge our churches to minister to them as the grace of God is sufficient. The Bible says, Such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. In the November-December 2020 issue of the Baptist Bulletin, the magazine published by GARBC, two articles presenting different perspectives were published. The introductory article to the two explained the views this way. Among regular Baptists, two views on the subject appear to be dominant. Some hold that the Bible does permit, although it does not command, divorce and remarriage under a limited set of circumstances. Others hold that divorce and remarriage are never scripturally authorized. Sometimes these views are referred to as the exception clause and no exception clause views. There have been many resolutions throughout the years in opposition to abortion. In one 1982 resolution it was stated, Abortion is national and social murder of the helpless unborn who are denied the right to life as God has ordained in procreation. In 1992, a resolution said, The practice of abortion is clearly a violation of the Sixth Commandment, Thou shalt not kill, and violates the biblical prohibition against the shedding of innocent blood, and also stated that they oppose research on aborted fetal tissue. A 1990 GARB resolution stated unalterable opposition to euthanasia. In a 1963 resolution on capital punishment, they stated, We believe that the Bible commits to the state the right and the responsibility to enforce the ultimate penalty, and that they protest the abolition of capital punishment. A resolution in 2014 said on the topic of corporate worship, There is increased pressure upon fundamental Bible-believing pastors and churches to integrate man-centered philosophy and pragmatic methodology into corporate worship, catering to felt needs and emphasizing people's comfort rather than divine presence, leading to a consumer mentality in churches and creating an atmosphere of entertainment. While recognizing the diversity and autonomy of individual churches, we encourage careful study of these issues with spiritual discernment in order to avoid the errors of entertainment, emotionalism, experientialism, and irreverence in corporate worship. The statement also reaffirmed commitment to substantive worship that is in spirit and in truth, John 4.24, and centered on the expositional preaching of the Word of God, 2 Timothy 4.2, 2 Corinthians 4.2, which is the Spirit's word of grace to build up local churches, Acts 20.32. A 2017 resolution on best church practices stated, We understand that there are certain areas pertaining to church practices in which well-meaning, godly people can disagree on the particulars without violating scripture. In these areas, we urge a spirit of tolerance and generosity, recognizing that in essential matters unity is required, but in non-essential or uncertain matters, liberty is permitted and charity is prescribed, Romans 14, 1 Corinthians 8. A footnote indicated that some of these areas that liberty is permitted on include selecting the music style to be used in corporate worship, choosing a Bible translation, deciding how best to contextualize the gospel message in a given culture, etc. Some garb churches are opposed to contemporary Christian music, and others utilize it. A 1955 resolution on temperance stated that the greatest monster of moral corruption authorized, subsidized, advertised, and protected by our national government to the destruction of our own people was traffic in alcoholic beverages, and a 1978 resolution affirmed a position of total abstinence from alcohol. A 1978 resolution expressed complete opposition to the legalization of casino gambling. Most garb churches do teach on tithing, but there's no official requirement and others don't teach or emphasize it. In 1989, the Garb Annual Conference made a statement against Freemasonry, stating that it is a dangerous and cultish false religion and indicating that it is incompatible with Christianity. In 1980, an annual conference resolution titled Reaffirmation of Fundamentalism was passed. I'm bringing it up here as garb churches may be called fundamentalist, a title they don't despise, but what do they mean by it? In the resolution, they defined a fundamentalist in this way. A fundamentalist is a born-again believer in Christ who maintains a steadfast allegiance to the inspired, infallible Word of God, measures all things by the rule of the canonical scriptures, affirms the foundational truths of the historic Christian faith, particularly the doctrine of the triune God, 
the Incarnation, Virgin Birth, Substitutionary Atonement, Bodily Resurrection, Ascension into Heaven, and Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the New Birth through Regeneration by the Holy Spirit, the Resurrection of Believers to Life Eternal, the Resurrection of Unbelievers to Final Judgment and Eternal Retribution, the Fellowship of Believers comprising the Church, which is the Body of Christ, represented in this age by local churches patterned after the New Testament, practices, fidelity to that faith, endeavoring to proclaim it to all who will listen. In 1980, the annual conference made a resolution on the Christian school, in which they stated several biblical mandates on the training of children, and then stated, the education of a child in the humanistic philosophy taught in the public schools is contrary to all of the scriptural admonitions set forth above, and later on that they urge born-again believers to take thought of their responsibility and accountability, realizing the greatest assets they have in this world are their children, and the greatest opportunity for help to be like and of use to Christ is afforded them through their Christian church and school. In a 2019 resolution condemning anti-Semitism, it was stated, Christians should regard the Jewish people with heartfelt affection, Romans 9 verses 1 through 3 and 10, 1, and pray regularly for the peace of Jerusalem, Psalm 122, 6, and for the salvation of all people, including those who are Jewish, Romans 1, 16, 10 verse 1. Some Baptist churches teach that Baptists are connected in a successive chain of authority, one starting another back to the time of Christ. Garb rejects this. A commentary article on their website says, We do believe that Bible teaching groups of believers have existed down through the centuries since the early New Testament church, but we place emphasis on common sound doctrine, not on a name or lineage. We never associate the name Baptist with a church in the New Testament. Further, we believe that all true believers compose the body of Christ, not just Baptists, even as we unashamedly believe and teach the Baptist distinctives. The polity of garbed churches, as is Baptist custom, is congregational. The article of faith on the church says further, We hold that the local church has the absolute right of self-government, free from the interference of any hierarchy of individuals or organizations, and that the one and only superintendent is Christ through the Holy Spirit, that it is scriptural for true churches to cooperate with each other in contending for the faith and for the furtherance of the gospel, that each local church is the sole judge of the measure and method of its cooperation, that on all matters of membership, of polity, of government, of discipline, of benevolence, the will of the local church is final. Churches can withdraw at any time for any reason, and the association doesn't have any rights to church property. There was a period of time where a church joining GARBC had to have the word Baptist in the name of their church, but today the policy is that a church must publicly identify itself as a Baptist church in its corporate documents and in its practice. And some garb churches don't have Baptist in the name of their church. The Articles of Faith state that the only two offices of the church are pastor and deacon. Only men are ordained to church offices. A 1975 resolution stated, Women cannot be ordained to the gospel ministry, nor can they properly serve as deacons of a local church, and for them to serve in such capacities is in violation of divine revelation. A qualification for churches to be part of the GARBC is that they are not in fellowship or cooperation with any local, state, or national convention, association, or group which permits the presence of liberal or liberalism, modernists, or apostates. GARBC does maintain cooperation and fellowship with other like-minded groups, for example, the Baptist Fellowship Association, a small association of mostly majority black Baptist churches. There are around 1,300 churches associated with GARBC, an annual conference is held, there is a publishing house, regular Baptist press, and a chaplaincy program. For more information on Baptists and various Christian denominations, subscribe to Ready to Harvest. The fully referenced transcript of this video with footnotes is available to members at readytoharvest.com.